During your time playing Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp, you've surely noticed the mission rankings that pop up every time you complete a mission. S rank, A rank, B, C, etc, etc, and you get more points the higher your rank. Whether you're trying to recruit all of the COs, some of which require you receiving S ranks in all of the missions, maybe you're competing with your local friends to see who can get the highest score, or you just want to get the most amount of money you can as quickly as you can to unlock everything in Hachi's shop, you're going to want to be able to get those S ranks more often than not. But the system on how to do so, what your score actually is at the end of a mission, can be a little obtuse. So today, at popular request, we're going to go over how this system works exactly and how you can work to get S ranks in every mission. Let's get started. Hello everyone, my name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. Thank you to everyone who's been enjoying my Advance Wars coverage. We've had pretty good reactions on all of my videos across the board, including seller reactions on my video where I talked about how I was wrong about recruiting COs. Guys like to see people fail, I suppose, but hey, thank you for the support. If you want to continue to support, a like and a subscription would be very much appreciated. I am a full-time YouTuber, though a small one, and I need all the help that I can to grow to hit 15k subs by the end of the year. And if you're feeling particularly generous, I do have YouTube memberships and a Patreon, so you can support me directly and not make me quite as beholden to ad revenue. If you do that, that'd be great. But mission ratings, that's what we're here to talk about today, and this is one that I got a few requests for in previous streams and on my previous Advance Wars videos. It's a more complicated system than you might expect, not because the actual mechanics are particularly involved, but because it's not really explained beyond just the descriptors of the individual categories that you get ranked on. So, this is going to be a two-part video. First of all, we're going to quickly go through each category and what they entail and how it is that you can get max points in those categories. And then we're going to go through an example of a mission that I did on stream where we focused on getting an S rank and how we were able to do so. So, the first thing that's important to note how you go about achieving an S rank in any given mission is going to be dependent on the objectives and layout of that mission. Sometimes you have set units, sometimes you can build units, sometimes there's fog of war, sometimes there's multiple enemies, all sorts of different things that can wind up coming into play. So there's not one like, do this, 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 and this, step three, four, five, and six, boom, done, S rank, move on. It doesn't quite work that way. You're going to have to be able to be flexible. But at least knowing how this works will make that a lot easier. The first of the three scores that we're talking about today is speed, then we're going to be talking about power, and then technique. And speed is probably the simplest, but with a caveat. As you might expect, speed cares about how quickly you finish a mission. The faster you finish one of these missions, the better the rank that you get, obviously. What's important to note is that there is actually a range, sort of if you're familiar with golf, a par for a course that if you land within that range in terms of number of days it takes to complete the mission, you will get an S rank. And unfortunately, that range is different for every mission. I don't know them all off the top of my head. I'm sure there's resources out there that you can look up if you specifically want to know any given mission, how quickly you need to beat it. The rule of thumb is finish it quick. From my understanding, typically, and my experience, the ranges fall in like a three to four day range. So a mission could take anywhere from, say, 7 to 10 days to complete and get an S rank. Can you go longer than that? Sure, and that's where your rank will start to fall, but if you get within that range, boom, S rank for speed acquired. Excellent. Next up is technique, and this is where things start to get a little bit more involved, and we have to actually start considering numbers here. So technique might seem like kind of an obtuse term to use, but generally... It's a descriptor for your skill as a commander on the battlefield. How do you exhibit your skill? Well, keep as many of your units as possible from being destroyed. The general rule of thumb is that you cannot lose more than 20% of the force that you have deployed on the battlefield if you wish to obtain max points for technique. This means in a pre-deployed map, you have to count up the number of units that you have or look in the status menu and see how many units you have deployed and do a little bit of math to figure out what 20% of that force would be. If you have, say, 20 units, you can't lose more than four units. Notably, this number is rounded up, so if you're looking at uneven numbers, maybe you have 13 units. Well, 20% of 13 would be 2.6, but that's going to round up to three, so you cannot lose more than three units. If you're on a map where you can build your own units, well, the same rules apply, it's just going to be important that you keep track 
of how many units that it is that you've built so you know where that number lies. Now, does that mean that you need to be sitting here counting the beans, keeping track of every single little thing like an accountant rather than someone playing a video game? No. Generally, just try to lose very few units. Be careful with your deployments, be careful with your movements, fall back with damaged units to get repairs if you're afraid that they're going to be destroyed, but you need to bring them back out onto the battlefield. Bring them back, let them get repaired, send them back out. It's important to note that damage to a unit is not the same as a unit being destroyed. You can have that medium tank knocked down to one HP three times over. So long as it isn't destroyed, it's not gonna count against your technique. So know when to fall back, strategic retreats are very important, Come back out swinging once your units are prepared and you won't lose that technique score. Finally, we have to talk about power. And power is odd. You would think that power would just be, well, I destroyed the majority of my enemy's force or I destroyed a lot of units or I destroyed a lot of units quickly. And that's where you start to get closer to how power actually works. Power is displayed by destroying a large number of enemy units in one turn, essentially taking out a chunk of the enemy's force with one swift motion, no hesitation, right? Again here, the general rule of thumb is about 10% of the enemy's force needs to be destroyed in one turn to get a maximum power ranking. In certain missions, like the mission we'll be looking at from my stream example, the enemy only has 10 units deployed and it's a pre-deployed map. So by destroying one unit, you will get a maximum power ranking. In other maps, where there's maybe fog of war, a greater number of enemy units in general, or again, units can be constructed, that's where things kind of start to get a little bit more complicated. Again, you don't have to become a bean counting accountant. Just make sure as you're going through a mission, you're taking the opportunity to destroy enemy units when and where you can. And maybe if you're ready to secure the objective, like say you're one capture away from capturing the enemy HQ, but you have a bunch of units left, you can take actions, go through and wipe out a few more of the enemy. Would it be considered brutal? Yes. Potentially even a crime, maybe if this was real life, but this is a video game and the points are what matter. So go through, use your units to take out a few more of the enemy and secure that power ranking. Notably, this number also does always round up. We round up in this house. So again, if the enemy has an uneven number of units, you can probably safely round up to a little bit higher of a number that you need to achieve. Shouldn't be that hard. 10% really isn't a lot. You know, even if the enemy has 50 units, you only need to destroy five in a turn, which with a judicious use of a super CO power should be achievable without too much of an issue, but still, it's something that's worth considering. Finally, to achieve an overall S rank in the mission, the total of your points across these three categories is going to be taken. If you have 280 points or more total, you will achieve that S rank. So it's good to note that there is wiggle room in these individual categories. You don't necessarily need to have a perfect score across the board to get an S rank unless you're just trying to get perfect scores. So don't sweat too, too much. Again, don't become an accountant. You're a commander. And more importantly, someone enjoying playing video games. So. With an explanation of the actual ranking system and its individual categories out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys, again, a battle from my stream, potentially even two battles, depending here on how I edit it down, wherein we took a look at how we could actually achieve the rankings that we needed to achieve, one in a pre-deployed battle, and in another, a battle where we could recruit our own units. So, take it away, stream me. Let's count up how many units Lash has here. So, she has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten units total. Enemy units equals ten. We, on the other hand, have one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we can't lose. We can only lose twenty percent of our units or less. If we lose more than that, then we won't be able to get an S rank for techniques. We need to avoid that. So we're looking at what three units that we can lose? Because ten percent would be one point three. Twenty percent would be two point six. Rounded up. So three units, yeah. We can't lose three units, or we can lose max three units. And then uh, if we do that, we will be guaranteed to get an S ranking for technique, or we should be anyway. As far as Lash's units are concerned, we need to destroy 10% of her units in one turn, but she only has 10 units. So literally just destroying one unit 
would get us our technique rating. Interesting. Okay, well that'll be easy enough. Yeah, that'll be absolutely be easy enough. As far as speed, every map has its own speed rating. So, like, we just kind of got to go as fast as we can. Go from there. Don't need to manually count. You can check the status page. Oh, really? Ah, looky dar. I had no idea. Awesome. Very cool. Thank you for the heads up on that. Fine, chill. Now it's my turn. Relax, Nell. We've got this. Double loading, indeed. Victory mark. I'll take this just for the sake of it. Wee! Wee! Hee <laughs> hee! Victory's mine. Easy peasy. Got to be. Congratulations! That was awesome. Flash. She's gonna be a handful. Ta da! Perfect rank. I'm just gonna take a little bit of a snapperoo of that. Perfection. And that's how you get an S rank in any given mission. So now this is where things get interesting in terms of your technique score and the power score. Because like, any any, any unit that you build or that the enemy builds is going to count towards those. So you want to make sure that you're destroying enough of the enemy while also like, keeping enough of your units alive as you're building them. So we go here. Build a rocket here. Perfectly in range. Cap this. And uh, we should be done next turn if I'm remembering the damage numbers, right? They flank your base on the other side as Eldigan come and stop them. Oh, of course. Eldigan exists in all Nintendo properties. Be because he exists inside of us. One. That's a way less satisfying explosion. Little, like, black sparks is very different than the big... Kadoosh! That happens whenever you attack a structure in Advance Wars 2 on the Game Boy, but oh well. Okay, that was satisfying, though. Nice. I did it! We won! If Andy goes to the middle of the map, does he get a Brave Axe? Also, always, of course. Doing the lab mission next, Neo tanks are useful. Oh, of course, absolutely. And there you have it, folks. A quick and dirty descriptor of how the ranking system works in Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp. This has been personally tested by me. As far as I know, it works pretty much identically to the way that the Game Boy Advance version worked. But now, unlike my Convey and Sony video, I have directly put it to the test and can confirm that this does indeed work the way that I have told you it works. Knowing the way this system does work will make your life all the easier. It's not a particularly difficult system to understand, again, once you know the actual mechanics at play, but the game doesn't tell you. That's what I'm here for. As far as individual strategy goes, well, that's a whole different kettle of fish. If y'all want some insight and strategic tips, let me know. I can do some videos about that type of thing. There's definitely a lot of stuff I can cover that I didn't cover in my beginner tips video, so if that's of interest, let me know. But this will at least help you in your mission to achieve those coveted S ranks. That said, I'm going to wrap this one up here. Again, my name has been Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. Thank you all so much for all the support. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, be good to each other. Bye now.